Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite channel, Huda TV. I'm your host, Arkham Rashid. A very important component for us to be good Muslims is having an Islamic environment, whether at home or outside, surrounding ourselves with good people and raising our children with strong Islamic values. On tonight's episode, we want to discuss the importance of an Islamic environment and in what ways can we create an Islamic environment for ourselves, our families, and our friends. So I'm going to start off as usual by letting my guests introduce themselves, and then we'll begin our conversation, inshallah. So if I can start with my right brother, if I can get your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Elias Townsend. Um, I'm, I came to Egypt from the UK. I'm here with my, with my family, my wife and children, and I'm just here uh, studying at Azhar. All right, and this is not obviously not your first time being on the show. We've you know had the honor to host you a couple of times. I had the honor of being here. <laughs> I'm not sure it's an honor for you, but <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. It's always an honor for us. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, brother. If you can give us your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself, go ahead. Hey, um, my name is Ahmed Anas Kashiri. Uh, people usually call me Honest. Uh, I'm from the U.S., specifically Los Angeles, California, and I'm here studying in Azhar as well. All right, and obviously this is not his first time either. He's been on <laughs> with us. You know, I can, by now I can introduce you guys, but the thing is that uh, it's so many guests usually for Let's Talk that I have each one of you guys introduce yourselves uh, just so the audience gets to know you a bit, you know, people who are watching for the first time, people who haven't watched before, just so they get to know you. But obviously we know each other now really good. <laughs> All right, if I can go to this side, brother, if I can get your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Sharif Hamdi. Uh, I work as a teacher of English language. I work for a school, and I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy about that. All right. And yes. you're from Egypt, correct? Yes, I'm from Cairo. Yes. All right, Sharif. Uh, it's you know an honor to have you on our show here today, to discuss this topic with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, brother. If I can get your name, where yes. you're from, and a little bit about yourself. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> My name is Ahmed, uh, and uh, I'm from Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an English teacher too. And uh, I'm happy because we've been an English teacher, teacher too. I'm his colleague. Is, is that why you chose to sit next to him? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we are from Egypt and in Egypt we know we, we get familiar with each other when we are close to Egypt. You know? I never knew yes. he was a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first right, time. Yes. And See, that's uh, why we have <coughs> them introduce themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, all right. And um, uh, it's not my first time here. And I'm mm. it's, it's yeah, a pleasure. Yeah, no, I know. We've I had you here before. Yes, it's, it's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you. All right, and vice versa, it's a pleasure to have you on the show Thank once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so I want to start off by um, asking each and every one of you guys, what does an Islamic environment mean to you? Um, okay, so <coughs> me personally, hmm. I believe that an Islamic environment is an environment in which we are happy and encouraged to display our Islam, where we don't feel like displaying our Islam is a hindrance on people. Mm -hmm. We don't feel as if displaying Islam is going to bring about any kind of harm or any kind of um, degradation or you know, negative feelings and mm. reactions from, from our outside community. And um, an Islamic environment is important because you know, it helps us, to do good, helps us to do good deeds. It makes it easier. It makes it easier yeah. to, to do good deeds because you actually feel comfortable whilst you're doing it. Mm. You know, sometimes you know, I was living as in a Muslim uh, minority country in the UK where most of the people are not Muslims. But some I thought there was some sort of no-go zones in... <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that's absolutely that's nonsense. <laughs> that's absolutely nonsense. Yeah. There's no no-go zones. But sometimes for some Muslims it's very difficult for them to display their Islam because they're just seen as being very strange. Mm. You know, even though there's no laws you know, banning hijab or banning beards or so sometimes people feel a bit... You know, if I do it, people, you know, people, look people at are going to judge they're me. Yeah, they're going to mm -hmm. judge me, react in the wrong way. You've got all of these issues going on in the, around the world today. Uh, maybe they're going to assume that I'm part of part of a that. certain group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's, it's, it, uh, in a, it is an Islamic environment is imperative in us, you know, actually being comfortable to be Muslims. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's like one of the key points I believe um, that we should take home from being in a Muslim Muslim environment. All right. Uh, Honest, if I can get your thoughts on what does an Islamic environment mean to you? Um, yeah, I second that on be having that that feeling of comfort, mm -hmm. you know, in being a Muslim, you know, and doing your daily activities without any um, 
hindrance, yeah, or, hindrance mm -hmm. or anything from other people, for example. And um, to me personally, I think an Islamic environment, for example, were it to be in the household or in the masjid or in your college or school, for example, if you'd have like um, Muslim groups or whatnot, um, that there shows that it's promoting that awareness of that Islamic identity, you know? Mm -hmm. So like if we didn't have those um, Islamic environments, it would have been as though we're just sharing our sub, it would be as though like as Islam for us mm -hmm. is as though it would be a subculture to the people where it's not a transcending thing where we show and it's just a secondary part of us where yeah. we're not showing the primary, you know, aspect of, aspect of it, how mm -hmm. it surpasses like the whole identity of ourselves, you know, as mm -hmm. being Muslims. So it's more of like a, uh, a culture um, nurturing environment of uh, sorts, yeah. Okay, uh, if I can take the question over to this side, you know, brother, what does an Islamic environment mean to you? When you think of an Islamic environment, what does that mean? Uh, concerning that, uh, something is coming to my attention. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Islamic environment cannot be achieved unless we apply what is uh, what is mentioned in the Holy Quran and and in the the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And if we do that, you will get an uh, intact Islamic environment. Because if you do this, you will have the happiness uh, in this world and the happiness in the, uh, in the world to come. Mm -hmm. The Prophet, peace be upon him, Sorry. said, mm -hmm. I have left amongst you, uh, I have left amongst you that which if you adhere to it, mm -hmm. you will never go astray. Yeah. The, the book from Allah, the Holy Quran, Quran. and my Sunnah, which means the, the prophets, the prophet's sayings, mm -hmm. statements, uh, the prophet's uh, actions, all of this. So <coughs> I believe that the concept of, uh, of Islamic uh, environment is achieved and fulfilled when all of the Muslims adhere to our or are committed mm -hmm. to the to the teachings of of uh, of the prophet peace be upon him that mentioned in the sunnah and also the orders in the holy quran, in the holy quran. all right uh brother what's your thoughts on yeah well actually I'd, I'd like to say that man is not born alone man is sociable and being sociable need you need to communicate with others you you you, you teach them and the, you learn something from them so speaking about islam uh, for example uh doing um you know the ibadat or uh, the rituals of, of religion. You, you, mm -hmm. you know you can you you, you can do it uh, alone, but you, you won't feel the feel the spirituality if uh, you don't do it with others. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, here in our countries, in our countries, you know, being fast in uh, in Ramadan, you know, it's something sociable that you know you you encourage each other. We encourage each other to go to the masjid to uh, to recite Quran and to pray together to pray tarawih and you know to speak after we have breakfast, we to speak about, you know, the day and uh, the suffrage of fasting, <laughs> okay, and yeah, the, the memories of, uh, of the day. So yes, um, it's about encouragement, as my brother said, that you, you, you and your friend together, if you just feel lazy that y you don't have the, the desire to pray or to do something, uh, so you, you find your brother, you know, you're side by side each with each other, you encourage each other to go, uh, to go forward to, to do what's right and what's what is religious mm -hmm. and um, speaking about you know the distractions of life that if you live in in a, a country of a minority is the Muslim minority you know um, about uh, it's about you know the woman and uh <coughs> these uh, scenes actually mm -hmm. that um, they they make you they, they play on your, your, your instinct mm -hmm. basically so you know, being in in uh, Islamic yeah, environment mean, makes you away mm. from these distractions and you, you keep you on the straight path. That's mm. the point. That's correct as uh, as far as Islamic environment, but I mean, a Muslim majority country doesn't necessitate uh, an Islamic environment. Yeah, that's uh, true, mm. and th it's a problem actually. Yes, so the, the the perfect or the ideal Islamic environment is not existed, mm. even in our countries, in Muslim countries. All right, interesting. Uh, I just want to take a quick minute to uh, remind the, the viewers that they can join our conversation anytime during this episode by simply calling the number on their screen 
And you know, we'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, your comments, your questions. You know, we'd love for you to join and take part in our conversation here. So now, uh, I want to move on to something. I want to move on to, you know, uh, why do you think an Islamic environment is essential for Muslims? If I was a Muslim, why do I need an Islamic environment to be a Muslim? Why can't I just be uh, an ascetic Muslim? You know. Uh, yeah, an Islamic environment is crucial because, mm -hmm. as we mentioned before, it pushes you to um, to worship Allah to the best of our abilities. <coughs> the best way to look at it is how what happens when we come out of that Muslim environment. Yeah. You know, sometimes you hear you know amazing, well amazing isn't the word, but awful stories when students come from Muslim countries to SSA London universities mm -hmm. and and like all of the the bad things are open to them. Uh, drinking alcohol is no problem. Mm. You know, getting with opposite gender, having relations outside of marriage, no problem. Drugs, no problem. Everything's everything's open. Mm. So you take them out of that environment and put them in our environment, and it's very hard for them to actually practice their Islam. Mm. Even to the point where it becomes easier not to practice Islam. You know, mm. so being in a Muslim environment is crucial because you know, our hearts are affected by what we see. Mm. You know, so if we're seeing a lot of bad things in the society and yeah. to the point where it's promoted, then it's going to be easy for us to fall into those, to the, to those kind of actions, you know. Yeah. So if we don't surround ourselves with a Muslim environment, we'll find, subhanAllah, that our deen, our practice, become very, very shaky, mm. you know. And you know you have the story. Not the man that killed the ninety-nine men. Uh, before you tell the story, we just have a uh, call from Brother Hassan from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Brother Alkan. How are you doing? I'm good. Alhamdulillah. How are you? And I want to thank you for you know calling in and joining our conversation here. You are very welcome, Brother. I uh, actually your topic is uh, Islamic environment. Am I right? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. So I uh, I have a problem. Uh, and uh, I'd like to listen from you. How can I deal with it? I actually I have a kid. He is uh, one years old, mm -hmm. and I want uh, I, I don't want him, I want him to grow up in a pure Islamic environment. But the problem is when he goes to my parents' home. Um, my 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 younger brother he used to listen to music and actually my 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 kid listen uh, to the music due to my uh, my brother and if I, I if I didn't send him to my parents' home um, maybe they will be very sad and I don't want I don't want him, uh, them to be sad and actually I don't know what what should I do please. Uh, uh, I'll be very grateful to listen from you uh, and to to tell me w what do you think. Oh. All right. Uh, once again, I want to firstly uh, thank you for calling in and joining our conversation, and also remind the other viewers that they should also uh, we want to encourage them that they should also call and you know comment and ask questions and you know uh, share their thoughts. Uh, as far as your question goes, uh, I would say. I'm going to give a theoretical answer, then we'll go to bro Brother Elias, who has children, so he can give a more realistic answer and more pragmatic answer. Uh, I would say, uh, I would recommend that you go talk to your brother first uh, in a nice way and ask him or tell him the issue you have with him listening to music you don't want. Uh, first, you should convince him that he shouldn't uh, be doing these acts. If that doesn't work, then you should at least tell him to abstain from these acts uh, while your uh, son uh, is at your parents' house. If that doesn't work, then you need to take it a step further, maybe speak to your parents uh, uh, to resolve this issue. So now I'm going to pass the same question on to Brother Elias and get his thoughts on it. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, it's a, it's a crucial question, you know, mm. because alhamdulillah, I have children. Um, my family are not Muslims. So yeah. I became Muslim maybe uh, nine years ago now. Mm -hmm. So I have the exact same problem. You know, you go to your, your, your family's house and, you know, there's all sorts going on. Mm -hmm. But like you said, the, the key point is to have conversations. Mm. You know, it's, it's very important. Sometimes when we start practicing Islam, we you know, shy away from, mm -hmm. where Islam is the complete opposite. It's supposed yeah. to bring family together. So yeah. rahim, mm. like, the ties of kinship are so important to the point where if we break our family ties, then it's uh, such a major sin. It's yeah. so serious, you know? Mm. 
So one of the problems I had when I first became Muslim is that I had done the exact opposite. It's like, no, this is just haram and I'm not, yeah. you know, and we, we become, <laughs> we've become like that. So um, the trick I found was having a conversation before the, op before the event arises. Yeah. So um, <coughs> we had, uh, you know, my family would celebrate Christmas, etc. Yeah. And uh, so I, it's when I was living at my parents' house, um, all of the issues come, you know, the music and the celebration of, you know, shirk essentially and uh, what have you. So the f the point I was really emphasised was when I spoke to my family beforehand, say, look, I'm not gonna, you know, be exchanging gifts or, mm. you know, I'm not gonna be, you know, s celebrating. They probably <laughs> thought you were trying to be cheap or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but I mean, you know, but if you explain it beforehand yeah. and uh, inshallah they w understand it, it's like similarly when my grandmother passed away mm -hmm. and uh, they asked me if I'm going to go to the church and mm -hmm. I said I can go to the church but when there's actually worship of mm -hmm. Jesus etc taking place then I want to just go outside and wait until it's done and then re-enter again. So and alhamdulillah they all understood. Mm. But it's just having the initial conversation that, first. That communication. The communication has to be yeah. there. Don't wait until you get to your mum's house to say, mum, can you tell brother to stop playing the music? Yeah. Have the conversation Station beforehand. beforehand. So right. inshallah, <coughs> it, will, it will play on their mind. And mm. like, That's actually a very good piece of advice. Yeah, I mean, the, the, like you said, I mean, talking to the brother, maybe if you say, look, I don't want my children to be raised around this environment, etc., it might be dawah to him. Yeah. You know, instead of just saying, Akhi, you know, music's haram, haram <laughs> or whatever. But if you say, look, I want my children, I want my children to be hearing the Quran or good mm. anashid or etc. Growing up, so they learn. Inshallah, it might be good, it might be good da'wah for him. So mm. I think the main thing is just having the lines of communication clear and open. Yeah. You know, and then inshallah, that's a way of bringing people, inshallah, to Together. practicing Islam mm. in an Islamic in an Islamic environment, yeah. inshallah. All right. Now, uh, before that phone call, you were before I interrupted you. Uh, you were actually telling us a story. Do you remember what that was? Or? Yeah. Do you know the, uh, the hadith about the man who killed, you know, ninety nine men, and yeah. he wanted to make, he wanted to repent, repent. to Allah. Mm -hmm. and I think Inshallah, everyone knows it. <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> so we skip the story. <laughs> skip the story because it's a bit lengthy. But the whole point is that the advice mm -hmm. was given to him to leave his environment, to go to a different a environment, different mm -hmm. an environment where he won't be maybe called back to those actions mm -hmm. that he was doing before. So, you know, if, if you look at us again, because uh, I was discussing what happens when, you know, we come out of that yeah. Islamic environment or that mm -hmm. Muslim environment. So it's important that we take real, real stock of our environment, because you know the thing with products of our environment, you know, it's mm -hmm. so true. When you come out of your environment, you realize who you are, yeah. you know? So really having that Islamic environment is absolutely imperative to our Islam, Islam, you know? And so Islam mm -hmm. really took off when they left Makkah and had their own environment in Medina. Yeah. So do you think uh, it's nearly impossible to create an Islamic environment in a Muslim minority country? Or do you think that's possible? You can create an environment? Um, some facets are possible. I mean, the mm -hmm. main thing is that you have it in your home. Yeah. This is this is key. You can't come outside and go inside your home and not having an Islamic. Not having an Islamic. So it, it starts at home. You okay. know, let's say charity starts at home. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or the Islamic environment it starts at home because that really it builds the character. Mm. And having close family ties is an Islamic concept again. So that builds the character in the children that we are, inshallah, trying to raise. Because mm. unfortunately in London anyway, it's like the parents are so busy working. Yeah. Mum's working, dad's working. The children just left to be raised on the street. And so they're gonna adopt the street culture. The street and culture and the street, you know, characteristics which which we don't want for the for which we which we don't want for our children, you know. Mm. So, you know, having the environment in the home is crucial. But then when we come out of the home, we need to be inshallah like it mixing with other Muslims that are like minded. Yeah. And so we can build that Islamic environment. Mm -hmm. This is why the the masajid in my Muslim minority countries, in my opinion, are better than Mus uh, masajid so in yeah. Muslim countries. Because it's like a community. It's, like it's a the gathering. center of yeah. the community. Mm -hmm. Over here, you have so many, you just pray and go. Yeah. Whereas in the Muslim minority countries, it's the center. You want a plumber, mm -hmm. you, don't know, you don't want to hire well, whoever, but you know there's a good and Muslim. It's, it's so true, you know, uh, yeah. because when you go to the masjid in, uh, back home, like in the U.S., uh, 
you know everybody there yeah, or a lot yeah. of the people there. Yeah. Over here, when I go to the masjid, I just pray and leave. You I don't know anybody don't, there. don't know anyone. You don't have yeah. no relationship mm. with, the, with the masajid. You know the hadith of the, the seven who are under the shade of Allah? Yeah. One of them yeah. is the person whose heart is connected to, to the, the masjid. masjid. You know, so one thing I find is that in London, I had that. I was, it was yeah. connected. You had, you had its problems, you know. Yeah. There's not as many, so you're wondering sometimes where am I going to have a place to pray. Mm -hmm. But when you actually are involved in a masjid, community projects, yeah. football or soccer, mm -hmm. <laughs> in your case, you know, it's, it really, it, it really, you know, pushes us to go to the masjid, you mm -hmm. know, and make friends and try to create a Muslim environment where we are. So, you know, really... The home and the masajid are two really key points that we need to look into. All right. Uh, honest, why do you think having an Islamic environment is essential? Uh, previously, you mentioned things like uh, Islamic get-together groups, MSAs. You know, yeah. Why do you think these things are essentials? Because uh, basically, um, everything else outside of that m Islamic environment is basically like con, like anti towards your development or your, your behavior mm -hmm. uh, to your morales and code of conduct. Um, and uh, like basically the only way to combat that yeah. is through that Islamic environment where you get together, you know, have that brotherhood, sisterhood, and you, you're you all like, um, as what the brother said, common-minded, like-minded yeah. brothers and sisters that... Same like goals in mind. Yeah, same goals in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's, that's the aspiration in which you want to achieve and, you know, that yeah. ideal-minded where everyone's all together and not being judged by, you know, as towards going outside that yeah. community or whatnot. Okay, I guess that <coughs> judging thing is, a, you know, a very important point because when you're hanging out with people that don't share the same beliefs yeah. or don't have the same goals in mind, then when you do something, you feel like, oh, my friends are going to judge me. Mm. You know what? I, I won't pray right now. I'll, I'll just make it up later or yeah. something. But if you're hanging out with, you know, uh, religious people or, you know, just good character Muslims, uh, when it's time to pray, they're the ones actually saying, hey, come on, you didn't pray yet. Let's yeah. go. You know, what's yeah. going on? Uh, okay. Why do you guys think having an Islamic environment is essential? Uh, I believe it's essential because um, the Islamic environment completely copes with the innate, uh, pure uh, human nature, mm -hmm. which Allah created in, in, in the cells of, of humans. So... Uh, Everything or every action under the cover of this uh, uh, of this uh, Islamic environment mm -hmm. is 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 making all the Muslims uh, happy and making them also living in a place in a better place yeah. because in the absence of uh, of the of this thing uh, you will feel like you are you are living in a in a jungle mm. so it's very important for the happiness of Muslims. To have uh, to un to live in under the cover of Islamic environment. Mm. Yes. All right, uh, brother. Ha uh, why do you think Islamic uh, an Islamic environment is essential for Muslims to have? All right. At the beginning, I, d I would like to tell to say to comment on your uh, th what you said that you you pray and go home. Yeah. Yeah. So it's out of feeling unfamiliar, uncomfortable with the environment, with the surroundings. Yeah. So um, Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, He sent the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to yeah. the, whole, the whole mankind. So Islam is, is a universal religion. Yeah. Uh, and f and it's I make being universal uh, makes, you, um, makes you work on this point to, to spread Islam. Mm -hmm. Because you are feeling strange, you are feeling unfamiliar if yeah. you just live in some country. So spreading Islam, uh, you know, uh, it helps you to, to get yourself away from, from being uncomfortable. For example, um, you live in, in some country of minority, minority Muslim, mm -hmm. uh, m Muslim minority. You, um, you, you live there, you feel that you are alone because you don't have Muslims around. Mm. So uh, if you, it, it makes you work um, on the dawah that you call for, for, for Islam. You, you help others yeah. or you... Uh, try to help us and help yourself to make your mm -hmm. own family that you, um, you 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 create your own big family big muslim family everywhere that whenever you wherever you travel you feel familiar you feel that you you don't you're not w away from home you're not away from your religion mm -hmm. so um, this this mean the meaning of muslim surroundings um, it's it makes us a, a must for us to call for islam everywhere 
mm. in order to help yourself to feel familiar when it, wherever you travel. Mm. That's Those the point. Those are very good points, especially with the travel there. Uh, okay, so now before we continue our conversation any further, we're going to go for a short break. And after that, uh, we're going to continue our conversation about Islamic environment. And I want to quickly remind you that after the break, you can also join us by calling the number on your screen and you know share your thoughts your comments your questions you know we will be glad to have you part of a, as part of our conversation uh, anyways stay tuned till we come back <laughs> Welcome back to Let's Talk Now. Before the break, we were speaking about how important an Islamic environment is and why it's essential for all Muslims to have. Now, what I want to do is I want to get into another question that's very important, and that is how to create an Islamic environment. How can we create a surrounding that is based off of our religion? And uh, for that, I want to go to this <coughs> side first. Uh, both of you guys are from a Muslim-majority country, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Egypt. Uh, Alhamdulillah. And I want to ask you, how can you create an Islamic environment in a Muslim-majority country, which is already Muslim, uh, yeah. majority of the citizens? So go ahead. Yes, we can do that through you know, spreading the, the Muslim rituals all mm -hmm. over the society or uh, giving people information, good information mm -hmm. about how to do that and let them know how to, spre to, how to spread this among the, uh, among the uh, the, the general society. population. Yes, mm -hmm. starting with homes, schools, streets, um, being at work, all of that. And as a teacher of English, uh, I can tell you that in my school, we try to do that with, with our students. Mm -hmm. Through, you know, sometimes we give them lectures, short lectures about how to be a good Muslim, how mm. to behave well with, with others, how to cooperate with your friends or your brothers to be good Muslims in the, in the future. Uh, and sometimes we use, you know, wall posts. So I see that uh, from, from the inception of the matter, you can spread it through young people or mm -hmm. young children. So it is very effective to do that. Yeah. Yes. And obviously it starts with the younger generation. It's easier to yes. uh, enlighten a child yeah, about the truth yeah. rather mm -hmm. than somebody that's already you know, lived most of his life, it's very hard to change his ideas yeah. and ideology. Yes, and something else very important, which is if you delegate your message to the young children mm -hmm. in a nice way, mm -hmm. in a way in which they, they love you, they will obey you at once because uh, kids, when, when kids love someone, they, they obey him and, and, and carry out what, what he says at the moment. So, mm -hmm. All right, uh, brother, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I, I, I just second what my brother said, that uh -huh. charity begins at home. Yeah. That, yeah, we, uh, as uh, the family, uh, they, they, they should, uh, the parents should have the responsibility to teach their kids the, the value, the culture of Islam. Uh, and they give them, you know, the, the story of our ancestors uh, and how, how, was Islam, how Islam was strange and the difficulties that, peop that people suffered from because of uh, being away from the, 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 the ideal Islamic mm. uh, surroundings and they, they teach their kids uh, to uh, value to, to, to value this, uh, this this thing that they yeah. are they live in in Islamic surroundings yeah. uh, and then yes uh, schools it's very important at schools uh, to um, to spread the, the culture of Islam to um, and alhamdulillah that we have al-Azhar here. Yeah. Uh, it's not that very perfect, but mm. at least, you know, uh, somewhere you find some people you to You just called my yes university not perfect, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, yeah. frankly speaking. Mm. Um, and, you know, the friends together that you, we are friends. So my name is Muhammad, your name is Ahmed. Mm. Uh, why don't we do something different, something mm. in Islam that that make us makes us ma makes us feel different and feel that we are true Muslims instead of going to cafes. Mm. Uh, yeah. chatting uh, brother, I'm just gonna have to cut you off for one second. Hold you. We have a phone call from Abu Abdullah from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. I'm good. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for you know calling and joining our conversation. Yeah. Um, well, would you allow me to add something to the episode? Of course. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I uh, I lived in America for about two years and four months. Um, and there, uh, I noticed that uh, the Muslim community there is embodied in, 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 in inventing 
inventing uh, Islamic environment to protect their uh, kids from uh, the cultures that they were just there. And in, in our Muslim countries, it's, it's just already, so it's very a uh, lot for us to, to have such an uh, environment to live in, alhamdulillah, Rabbi. and thank you very much. Alhamdulillah, thank you for your contribution to the show. We're you know, pleased that you called in and joined our conversation, and I want to remind the other viewers once again that you know the number's on the screen. Uh, pick up your phone, don't be shy, and give us a call. Uh, so go ahead, brother. Yes, uh, I was speaking about uh, the family, schools, and uh, it's very important to say uh, that uh, the media mm. has its turn to a very important role. Yes, yeah. and you know because you know what well, what we see on TV, TV is, is important, especially in in you know in the the Arabic family. Yeah. Um, and a lot of culture, a lot of is sucked out of TV. Yeah. And. Uh, the scenes on TV are not very good, actually. Mm. So the media, th they have a responsibility too to, uh, to spread the culture of Islam. Um, and, um, you know, uh, the parents too, uh, they, they have to, to teach the daughters mm. the culture of uh, wearing hijab because it's not a perfect hijab. Mm. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm a young man, I'm speaking from the perspective of young people in Egypt. Mm. Uh, that it's it's really a suffrage walking on the street and you know keeping your your eyes away from everywhere mm -hmm. that yeah the the ideal hijab is not existed in Egypt and um, and it's really it's it's something very bad that you you find a father walking on the street with his daughter and she's not wearing in a perfect uh, mm -hmm. she's not dressed in a in perfect clothes um, so yes. Uh, the for the women also. Okay. Now, uh, before I take the question to this side and ask them about uh, Muslim minority countries yes. or countries where Muslims are the minority uh, and how to establish uh, a good uh, Islamic environment there. Okay. We got a phone call. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Khalid from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. I want to ask you about. Uh, the Islamic environment uh, in the time of uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the time now, because uh, of course I hate Muslims and I love Islam now because the relationship between neighbors are very bad, and in every dealing in our life now. So, and I want from you to advise me what can I do now. Uh, uh, brother, if you can repeat that question, I didn't hear it clearly. It's what? Please loud your voice. Repeat that question. I didn't hear it clearly. Yes. Uh, the Muslims now are very really bad because I am a Muslim and I live in a village. My uh -huh. neighbors are very bad. The dealing is now because our Prophet Muhammad, this, we have on him said in his hadith, ad din al muamala The religion mm. is the dealing. Now the neighbors are very really bad. Uh, uh, everyone you deal with them now is very bad. Uh, the Muslims cheat uh, when they are feeling any uh, good in every place. So I hate Muslims and I love Islam. What uh, can you advise me to do now? Please, I implore to you and I implore every Muslim in all over the world. I swear you to advise me what can I do with Muslims now. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, brother, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, calling in and joining our conversation here. So the brother asked a very important question, and he mentioned a very good point. Uh, he said, you know, he's, he hates Muslims, but he loves Islam. And the reason being because, uh, you know, people like his neighbor and other Muslims he's interacted with, you know, have cheated him or, you know, are rude to him or, you know, don't behave in an Islamic uh, fashion or manner. Yeah, I just find it qu quite, quite, r quite tough to say that you, you hate Muslims. You, you, you you should love your brother, okay? He may not be on the straight path, but you shouldn't hate him. Mm. You just advise. And uh, Well, I feel it's not, I don't think that's a, a Muslim issue or non-Muslim issue. I feel like there's good people and bad people out yeah, of every that's religion. Mm. That's the point, yes. Uh, so and for us as Muslims, we need to uh, educate uh, our brothers, our sisters, uh, starting from a young age, you know, young children. We need to educate them in, in, in a proper Islamic manner. That's why Islam came, mm. to take away that rudeness, to take away cheating, to take away, you know, these type of uh, actions. And what, what we can do for somebody, somebody that's already grown up, like your neighbor, and he's being rude to you, you do the exact opposite thing. You be nice to him. Mm. Uh, we have another phone call. Assalamu alaikum. 
uh, Mansoor from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Good afternoon, brothers. Yes, good afternoon and uh, uh, good evening. Actually, it's evening here. Uh, I want to thank you for oh. calling and joining our conversation here. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, too. Go ahead, brother. What would you like to share with us? I just want to commend um, the brother for uh, actually all of you for this effort of enlightening uh, our Muslim brothers and sisters. Jazakallah khair and may Allah reward you abundantly. Well, and once again, I want to thank you for uh, calling in and sharing your uh, comment there with us uh, about us. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, as I was saying, you know, it's I don't feel like that. I don't feel that it's a it's a Muslim issue that you know because they're Muslim they're this way. It's just most of the times it's it's a part of a culture, mm. and Islam came to take those not your culture away, but those things that are wrong with your culture. It came to rectify them. Oh. And you know, uh, once we apply the correct Islam to our culture, then our culture becomes correct. You can have your culture with you. Nobody's saying Islam takes away your culture. That's not what it does, but it rectifies it. Mm. You know, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I agree 100%. <coughs> I think, um, unfortunately, we look at Muslims and we expect Islam. Mm. This is the problem, you know, but yeah. there's a clear difference between the two. Remember hearing of a brother who was reading a translation of the Quran yeah. I can't remember whose translation it was it, it escapes me but the translator he said Alhamdulillah I knew Islam before I met Muslims mm. yeah. yeah because of the same problems that the brother faced mm. but then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Adina Nasiha mm. like the brother mentioned like it is advice yeah. like, the deen is advice so we really need to really question not question people but advise them in the best way and sometimes <coughs> when we're advising people, we approach them in a completely wrong way. Akhi, that's so haram, we can't do that. Yeah. And so we need to realize that, you know, the whole point of giving advice is because you want the person to accept it. Yeah. It's not just. If you rub it in his face. You not not rub it in his face. Yeah. And if you say it in a way in which <coughs> all you want to do is get your point across, yeah. he's never going, he's never yeah, going he's to accept, accept it. it. You know, so when we give an advice, we need to bear in mind who we give advice mm. to. And what is the best way mm. we can we can tackle that, you know? Yeah. And <coughs> I wouldn't necessarily say that. Okay, we shouldn't say we hate Muslims because that's yeah. every single I hate. Every that's a generalization. Muslim. It's a big generalization because, mm. you know, <coughs> you will find some uh, maybe, maybe that one Muslim that you do find <coughs> that's very good, very honest. It, it just makes up for all of the bad ones that you meet. You mm. realize not there is actually some hope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is some hope, yeah. but also we need to be that Muslim. Mm. You know, because sometimes when we say, you know, I hate Muslims and all these kind of things, and we become like those, yes. mm. like those same people. We but we start being harsh with people because they're harsh with me. I mm. want to cheat them because they cheat me. So really, it's on us to be the good mm. example, inshallah. And that's and that's follow. the best <coughs> form of dawah, also. <coughs> yeah. That that you know, when somebody <coughs> being rude to you, you do the exact opposite. Our Prophet Sallallahu taught us how to behave with people, and that's exactly how I'm gonna be how I'm gonna behave with you, no. whether or not. You follow that, or you're being rude with me or not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, act out exactly how the Prophet ﷺ has taught us how to act out. And maybe, you know, once your neighbor sees that, he sees that, you know, every time I'm rude to this guy or I tell him something, he's always replying in such a good manner. Why? You know, what's up with this? You know, and that's the best form of dawah, doing it yourself. So, uh, taking my question back to you guys, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. Before I move the question to the brothers here, and ask about how to establish an Islamic environment in a Muslim minority country. Yes. Uh, I want to, I want to extract a really quick question. I know one of the things they're going to say is establishing, you know, s things like the MSA or groups at the masjid. Mm -hmm. I want to know: Do you think, uh, in a Muslim majority country, mm -hmm. that is a good way to establish an Islamic environment by having a group, or do you think it's better if we have? If you do it through an education system or a more nationwide thing, because the country is majority Muslim. Would would uh, creating an Islamic environment be better on a nationwide basis? Meaning, you have the television, everything influencing a good Islamic environment. The schooling system, you know, everything around the country is influencing or creating an Islamic environment. Or do you think it should be done how you know one of the ways it's done in the West, which is creating small groups where you know you and your friends get together, you know, have a good Islamic uh, organization? Uh, what's your thoughts on well, that? Well, in, in fact, in fact. People here in majority, m Muslim mm -hmm. majority countries, they they just know Islam as a religion, 
Yeah. So they, they are born Muslims. Mm. But the culture itself, they, they don't have uh, deep uh, understanding of, of Islam. Yeah. So yes, it's a very good idea uh, mm -hmm. to form groups. And it's really, it's what we do, yeah. uh, especially in, uh, in Ramadan. Yeah. That we, we, we form some groups of brothers mm -hmm. and we, um, uh, we go to uh, wake people up to pray Fajr if yeah. they are asleep or uh, if, they, uh, if they don't to wake up to, uh, to have uh, the suhoor. Uh, and we, uh, in, in the masjid, we, we form groups to recite Quran and we encourage people to come to us uh, and we make uh, some, uh, you know, some general breakfast a banquet <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to people to come around. Yes, so yeah, forming groups, it's something very, very important. Uh, and you know, um, in some, some uh, communities, they, uh, ignorance, they, people, yeah. they, don't, they are illiterate, they don't try it, they don't uh, read. Um, so yes, we, uh, we, we have to, uh, to make something um, like small groups, mm -hmm. instead of being at some, something general. Because if you just want to make it general, you have to count on media. Yeah. Firstly, uh, in the first place, and media, no, it's not. Uh, it's not something, it's not something Islamic at all. Yes, but this is media also. <laughs> no, media. This, this media, yeah. This media, yeah. Well, of course, yeah, yeah. I'm but just kidding. It's yeah. not as strong as the, the other media, the secular media. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I can say also that depending on the the two methods is effective too, because Allah mm -hmm. Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ." So. Uh, we can use every every method or, or every way to uh, to spread knowledge and uh, and to have a Muslim mm. uh, a good Muslim society. It's okay. That's a very good point. There, okay. uh, you know, using small groups and on top of that, a yes. nationwide uh, media coverage. Uh, okay, if I can take the question over to this side, uh, you know, how do you think you guys can create an Islamic environment in the West or in a Muslim minority country? Um. As, as all the brothers said, um, parenthood is, is very mm. crucial in the beginnings of yeah. a childhood of a Muslim. So um, starting from being the parents themselves as a, as a role model, you know, how, they, how children, when their learning process is, is basically through like imitation. So like yeah. they imitate what the parents do here and there. And um, I remember when I, when I was a little kid, yeah. <laughs> um, I went to uh, some other uh, friends' houses and whatnot. They had, um, they um, taped up some posters like around the house. Like mm -hmm. for example, um, like uh, du'as, you know, um, supplications, bef like on the doors for yeah, bathrooms. Entering the bathroom, yeah, entering the bathroom, bathroom and yeah. entering the house, um, even through um, the car and everything as well. So um, it became like a whole. Um, daily process, you know, so mm -hmm. like you're remembering Allah, oh, and then you um, through like that imitation repetition and whatnot, you um, you get to that point where you actually um, becomes a habit yeah, mm -hmm. it becomes a habit mm -hmm. and you actually uh, find the hikmah behind, the wisdom behind it as mm -hmm. to why we're doing this every single day, every single moment, you know, every why is there mm -hmm. a dua and this and there and it's for, you know, for the prayer for um, the remembrance of Allah and yeah, so parenthood is a base, you know, for mm -hmm. you and also, um, I would say uh, the masjid as well. You yeah. know, masjids. Um, masjids are like the key point. Yeah, the key the point. Yeah. The gathering point. Masjids um, are basically, as what we all said, um, are where we find all the common-minded Muslims. You know, where mm -hmm. everyone has um, the like um, the common struggles. You know, and yeah. once we come together, you know, we we feel like have that comfort, you know, uh, mm. together here and there, and um, in groups as well, and um, schools and organizations. colleges, organizations as well, um, they keep that bond together, you know, that that yeah. um, the ties of kinship is what the brother said, so those all together um, really, you know, conjoin the basis of that Islamic environment everywhere you go, inshallah, you know. All right, uh, Brother Das, can I get your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, um, one of the elders in the London community, from was Hafiz Jazz, Hafizullah, he said that, this is very simple, he said, live Islam, give Islam. <laughs> it's very simple, live Islam, give Islam. and give Islam. Yeah. So simple, but you know, when, when you actually put it into practice, you see the results and the fruits from it. <coughs> you know, 
Um, and obviously, growing in a or being in a non-Muslim country, one of mm -hmm. the best ways in which we build con like build foundations is like uh, our brother mentioned that you give dawah, you mm -hmm. tell people about Islam, not just obviously you act on what you're saying as yeah. well because this is a problem we have. You know, we talk a good game but no one sees it. Yeah. You know, but <coughs> when people actually see Islam, it's it's it's, it's, it's actually quite eye-opening. You know, mm -hmm. just simple things like. Um, <coughs> my dad's a, he was a bus driver yeah. and he came asking me questions about wudu because he saw Muslims um, sticking their feet in the sink. Yeah, <laughs> sticking <laughs> their feet, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sticking the their feet in the dawah. sink and, and praying. And he would ask me, okay, why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Said, but if Muslims wasn't doing that, that, they would, that, that wouldn't bring that up would the question. Never, yeah. that would, the yeah. question would never have arise. Oh, no. So one thing we also had in London was something called Meet Your Muslim Neighbour. Mm. Okay, yeah. This was basically an initiative by a lot of masajid in London. They have like an open day <coughs> and they invite all of the non-Muslims in. Mm. So they have like Kind of like an open house. Open day, yeah. yeah. So all of the Muslims, or sorry, the non-Muslims of the local area would go inside, they have like some tea and that. And mm. They ask, just ask questions about Islam. Okay, ask whatever you want. We have similar things like why Islam? Yeah, yeah you yeah, probably, you have your Da'wah, our team is basically. Yeah. Yeah, most of you have it, you have it in America. I think well. our Da'wah game is better than yours. I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, but it's, it's, it's important, you know, if it's yeah. important that we do these things because it allows the the community at large, not just Muslims, not Muslims as well, mm. to actually understand, okay, this is why Muslims do this. This is why Muslims park in my driveway <laughs> on a Friday <laughs> because they're trying, yeah, to, go to, go to, <laughs> they're trying yeah. to go to the Friday prayers. Mm. And if you have this open door policy, everyone <coughs> can come mm. and understand and learn about Islam, then inshallah people will become Muslims. And people, or if they don't become Muslim, they at least become sympathetic They're towards yeah. the Muslims. Yeah. They'll be aware of what it is. Yeah. Because, because usually when people are not aware, they fear what they, they don't fear, know. They fear, they don't know. Mm. So, and if you look at what a Muslim society is based on, things such as like, you know, respect, you know, uh, non-violence, you know, getting rid of all of the harms, you know, commanding good, forbidden, evil. Mm. It's something that every single person on this earth that is, you know, has a good heart, Wants in the, they no one wants to live in a violent area. No yeah. one wants to live in an area where there's drugs and all these kind of things. So if Muslims are promoting these values, mm. you know, it's good for dawah, but then at the same time, it's also re-emphasizing, re yeah. you know, we, we're actually creating an environment that we can feel comfortable in. Yeah. If we're actually positive members of society, you know? So this is like, this is, this is key, the da essential. giving dawah, because yeah. You know, giving doubt it just reinforces yourself at the end of the day. Mm. If you're explaining to someone, you know, this is why I believe Allah exists. Mm. This is what the Prophet has done to, sh to prove he's a prophet. Sometimes mm. as you're speaking to people, it's like reinforcing mm. yourself at the same yeah. time. You know, mm. so like for me, you know, the key is just da'wah, you know, and, you know, live Islam, give Islam. Inshallah, it's good for our iman as well. All right, uh, unfortunately, that's the end of the episode. So I want to thank you guys for giving me a lovely conversation here and giving our viewers a good time. Uh, once again, thank you guys for coming in tonight and sharing your time with us. And I want to thank you, dear viewers, for tuning in to another, another episode of Let's Talk. And also, I want to thank those who gave us phone calls. And I want to uh, encourage others that during our episodes, they can always call us. This is their episode. You know, uh, it's one big conversation. Pick up the phone and join us. Uh, other than that, don't forget to like us on Facebook. And until next time, may God bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.